Have you ever had a boss, a manager, a supervisor, or even a family member display jerk-like behaviors? You know the type like they shout, they humiliate, they demand perfection, they belittle, or they simply just don't care. Is the jerk possibly you? Are you your own self-bully? Let's stop that right now. They say if you're bullied, it's really essential to understand that it's not your fault. The only person at fault is the bully themselves. But what if that's you? They also say stand up to your bully. Most of us can recognize when another person's being emotionally abusive or being a bully or being a jerk. You know, you can recognize the way they're speaking. Really, the intention is to tear that person down, to tear down the self-confidence, tear down their self-worth with those kind of put downs and shame. It's just so much harder to recognize when this bully is ourselves. Do they sound like this? I'm such a pig. Why can't I have some self-control? If I ask this question, everyone will realize how stupid I am. No one's ever going to take me seriously again after this. I may as well quit. If I can't even do this, I don't deserve anything good. I'm such an idiot. Always demeaning yourself and not knowing how to be your own cheerleader will always keep you from success and no matter what you're trying to do. And avoiding this topic and just allowing yourself to be that jerk is one of the top reasons we just give up on the journey and we give up on ourselves. The thing is, it also takes an emotional toll on our mental health. It's time to debunk the myth, once a jerk, always a jerk. It's time to treat yourself better, don't you think? Let's first understand there's many factors that contribute to our own self-emotional abuse. Perfectionism. If you're a perfectionist like me, even the smallest, what we think are mistakes, become these big catastrophes. Because we think we're letting ourselves down if we're not perfect, that becomes our biggest inner critic voice. Another factor that contributes to our emotional self-abuse is relationships. Maybe you had a relationship with someone that just wasn't the most emotionally balanced. Maybe you had a partner that wasn't very emotionally balanced. Experiencing emotional imbalance in a relationship or if the other partner isn't stable, that just kind of leads to other areas of our life. It just allows us to accept that kind of treatment for ourselves to ourselves. Another factor is our childhood. If we had influential adults or parents in our lives that were maybe a little emotionally abusive, neglectful, just had to do the things they had to do, and maybe you were just left a little bit behind mentally, emotionally, socially, it's really easy for those voices to stay alive and that negative self-talk to continue. Another factor is mental health conditions. Research tells us that depression, anxiety, kind of being stressed all the time can lead, can contribute to self-abusive behavior, that negative self-talk that we continue moving on with. Emotional self-abuse just doesn't sound or look just one way. Which patterns do you recognize in your own self-talk? What about name calling? Would you find yourselves name calling someone else? Probably not. But how many times do we do it to ourselves? And the important thing to understand is that really plays on our self-esteem and it will take up a lot of our thought patterns and efforts to be our own cheerleader. We might not think that putting ourselves down, name calling ourselves in front of others is a big deal compared to doing that to someone else, but it plays a big role on how we treat ourselves moving forward. What about self-doubt? Research really indicates and highlights the fact that self-doubt is connected typically to perfectionism and imposter syndrome. In short, people will set these impossible high goals and then when they don't meet them, right away they feel like self-doubt and that they won't measure up and that they're a failure. Another pattern is unhelpful thinking habits. They're called cognitive distortions. Like filtering, when we only focus on the negative, we only use a negative impact versus thinking about it positively. The shoulds, like fixating on, I should do this, I should have done that, I should know better, I should, I should, I should. The shoulds just keep us continually feeling like we can't measure up. Another distortion is global labeling. It's that times when we just judge ourselves based on one event, one thing, 
And we base ourselves, our self-worth, our thinking, everything just on that one event or that one thing. And another distortion is control fallacy. Control fallacy is when we put blame on ourselves when it's really out of our control. Another pattern is self-cruelty. A couple clues of self-cruelty is when you tell yourself subconsciously or consciously that you don't deserve or that you don't trust it'll happen or you tell yourself you're going to have a bad outcome. This video isn't about labeling ourselves as jerks. It's about defining jerk-like behaviors and seeing that if we have that within ourselves. Take a moment to see if any of these apply to you. Many jerk-like behaviors fit perfectly into what we would consider self-emotional abuse. Some are a little bit, maybe not as obvious. Regardless of the labels, the effect is the same. Recognizing your ineffective and even damaging jerk-like behaviors is the first step in doing something about them. Because behaviors are learned, we know then that they can be changed. Am I saying it's gonna be easy? No, but it is possible. The difficulty level in changing some of these ineffective jerk-like behaviors depends on the answers to some of these questions. How ingrained is the behavior? Have you been acting this way for three years or 50 years? Of course, a clearer picture of the goal that you want, what does it look like, feel like? What do you, what do you want it to be? Will get you there easier than one that is just vague, blurry, and changes all the time. If you want to change a jerk-like behavior, that learned behavior, do you have the resources available to you? Of course, it's easier to change behaviors when you have support systems and supportive people around you. I just want you to know that it is possible. You just have to maybe look a little deeper to find those resources and support systems. And then ask yourself, how complex is this learned behavior? Is it as simple as just telling yourself, I'm never going to do it again? The thing is negative reactions to ourselves, that, those learned behaviors, that negative self-talk has taken a while to plant its deep seed. And when we're under stress, it just becomes more complicated. You may need to develop a rapport of certain behaviors to try to change one behavior. And one of the questions to ask is, do you really wanna change and why? If you can't answer this, you really don't wanna change. As simple as it sounds, as hard as it is, if you want change, you need to want change. And lastly, of course, what can we do to reduce some of these behaviors? First is honest feedback. It's kind of tough, right? No one wants to be criticized. Our defensive mechanisms go up, but we have to look at first honest feedback. You really need to get a clear picture and how you behave with yourself and with others. Hello, hello! Make some noise for some facts! Can you do that without shame, guilt, and judgment? Then ask yourself, so what? Think about the implications of those behaviors. Are they getting in the way of your effectiveness? Are these behaviors causing other people around you to leave or change? If you really wanna change, seek help from others to do so. You could get a coach, you could get a counselor, you could see your pastor, you could attend a personal growth seminar, you could read a self-help book, you could stick around and check out the other videos in this channel because that's what I'm doing here. And remember to ask people to lovingly monitor your behavior. Be very clear that you're trying to change a certain behavior. Tell them why. Ask them for support, not for permission. And then you might have to tell them how to support you in that. And then ask them to give you lovingly, constructive, honest feedback so that you can make the changes, you can make the improvements, so that you can start unlearning some of these crazy learned behaviors that just are not serving us. Stop being a jerk to yourself so you can stop being a jerk to others. It requires being patient with yourself and with those others. It just takes time to change behaviors. It just does. And it takes time for others to trust you that you're gonna do so. And it takes time to trust yourself. Another video that I really think could help you with your thinking is this video. Touch the screen or click on the link below now and I'll see you there.